um, differ in the, in the way they change the reader. So instead of just activating a reader to be able to, to, to read cards in your system, you can actually program a reader through some of these cards. So there's some potential attack vectors here. Um, as a quick overview of, of the rest of the talk, um, what we did to the system is, of course, we, we overheard what, um, what th this reading device we just showed um, communicates with, um, to, to the host that we can overhear on, on USB. Um, interestingly, we can emulate most of this um, so you don't need the, the Legic software anymore, which might be a little bit too expensive. Now, on the RFID side, where the real, real attacks happen, we can, of course, over here, um, communication between a Legic reader and card, um, which is somewhat trivial given, given the right hardware, this Proxmark device. Um, we can then, after we have observed what, what a reader does to a card, emulate that and, and pretend to be a reader, um, but not just replay what we have seen, but, but also um, change those commands and, and become a reader that perhaps does things that that Legic didn't intend for the reader to do. And finally, once we understand how all this communication works, we can then emulate the card and um, pretend to be pretty much any, any card we want, again, using this very device. So this is a very, very powerful pen testing tool. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, I'll hand over to Henrik now, who, who goes over, over each of these attacks in a great level of detail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as, as we said, um, we, we sniffed the USB communication and then replayed that so that we would have a more reliable radio channel chatter that uh, we could actually uh, correlate against each other, uh, multi multiple chatters against each other. Um, on the RF side, as Carsten already mentioned, we only had the rough specs of the protocol that were published in the, the ISO NX. These, uh, I, I'm not going to go into each of these details, one of the interesting points that make these, uh, this protocol especially awkward is, for example, the, um, the data rate, the modulation of uh, the, the data rate on the, on the chip side is uh, 100 microseconds per bit, so that's not related to 13.56 megahertz at all. It's some, some arbitrary data rate. Uh, similarly, the data rate of the reader device is Depend, depends on the actual data that's being transmitted. Uh, so uh, one bit takes longer than a zero bit, which is very strange for a radio protocol. And uh, two things that are not specified in the ISO index that we had to find out ourselves was the framing, which is simply said to be defined by the synchronization of the communication, whatever that might mean. Turned out they meant that the card frame starts at a fixed point in time after the reader frame. And uh, the card frame is not limited by start or stop bits, so you have to know how many bits the card is going to send. Especially, a mute, uh, no card is indistinguishable from a, from a card sending only zero bits. If you don't have any card present, it will look just the same as a card sending only zeros and the other way around. Uh, we did sniff. Uh, I first tried to sniff with my open PICC. Turned out that wasn't uh, as good. Because of the fixed uh, threshold, I then programmed the uh, Proxmark, or used the program that's already available, to uh, implement a sniffer on the Proxmark, or more accurately, I um, used an oscilloscope or then a logic analyzer to actually capture the data. This is what you'll see on the, the oscilloscope if you uh, tap into the debug line on the Proxmark while sniffing. Is uh, what you see is um, the the analog signal. This is the card sending. This is the reader sending and card sending again. And this is the digital signal. And if you have a digital signal, you can feed that into the logic analyzer, which will give you a very nice and especially very long trace of the complete communication. For this trace, I used my own software on the USB channel to simply send a get UID command, or what I thought would be a get UID command. And as you can see, this reader supports multiple protocols. It will cycle through these uh, repeatedly. It first tries, this is the long one here, it first tries Legic RF. We have a Legic RF card present, so that actually takes some time to read the UID. Then it tries ISO 14403A, if you would zoom in there, which I'm not going to do. And then it tries ISO 15693, which is the other protocol that the advanced cards use. Zooming into this block, that's the Legic Prime block, you'll see that card and reader 
uh, exchange data and uh, all those frames are very short. This is a frame from the reader, this is a frame from the card, reader, uh, curiously enough, no, reader again, card, reader, card and so on. And if you zoom into this, uh, this uh, particular section here, you will actually see the reader frames uh, or the, the reader bits and the card modulation. This graphic below here is zoomed in again, so this is one reader bit. The reader bits are delimited by short pauses and the duration of this, uh, the time duration of this part encodes the bit. And this is the subcarrier of the card that's uh, uh, cut off here. I then wrote a simple decoder in C to decode this, uh, these traces as I did before with the MIFA protocol and experimentally figured out how big the delay from reader frame to card frame is. Uh, as we uh, said, uh, the card frames have some lengths that we didn't know at first. By comparing multiple traces, that's why it was important to always have the same command on the USB channel so that we always have comparable traces on the radio channel. We were then figured out that the, all the communication traces looked about the same. It starts with seven bits from the reader, six bits from the card, six bits from the reader. This is what we will later call the setup phase. And then starts some uh, distinctly different communication. That's what we'll call the main phase where there's a reader command and a card answer, reader command, card answer, and so on, and so on. Um, the reader command, again, what the fuck, the reader command uh, differs in size depending on the card type. For the prime cards, there are two different or three different card sizes available. And uh, the card with the, the more storage the card has, the longer the reader command will be. And uh, the card answer always is the same size. We first thought there would be some encryption involved here. They promised us some encryption to break, so <laughs> uh, we just assumed that this uh, 766 exchange would be s uh, the setup phase and uh, the first, the first transmission in the setup phase would be like an initialization vector of a stream cipher. Looks almost like that. It's more or less random. It's a very bad random number generator. It, uh, it's a very short random number only six bit. It's a very bad random number generator <laughs> because it generates one of these uh, values in 10% of the time when there, it should only be 1.5%. So really bad random. And uh, it doesn't look like there's any randomness from the card because for the same random number from the reader, the card responses will always be the same for the same card. And also for the same random number from the reader, all the reader commands will always be the same, independent of the card. Um, so this uh, is uh, what we what we get from this uh, well, what we get from this program. There is um, uh, from the reader and from the tag seven six six nine twelve nine twelve and so on. And there's a couple of bits, and at first or in other protocols, you will see a get UID command and then a long response that contains the UID. This wasn't ca the case here. Apparently, they only transmit one byte of UID for each of the responses. So we choose to interpret all these frames as single integers uh, in uh, least significant bit first order. So this is the least significant, the most significant bit. Then you can express that as hex numbers, which makes it easier to handle and uh, much shorter on the slide. In order to find out which of these responses is the UID and uh, uh, as it turns out in which order the UID is sent, we compared like two cards. Uh, you'll see that the reader command is always the same, but the card response of obviously differs. Uh, it must differ because the UID must be in there somewhere. In order to find out where it is, we just XORed these responses. This is what you'll see here. And XORed the two UIDs and just try to map which of these uh, UID XORs matches one of the response XORs. So let's look at the first. Uh, first byte of UID obviously is the first byte that's being transmitted in the main phase. Second byte of UID mm -hmm -hmm, is the last bit byte transmitted in the main phase. Third byte of UID 
is the third byte transmitted in the main phase, and the last byte of UID is the second byte transmitted in the UID. So there's already a major waterfuck uh, going on here.